man, all the leaves are blowing into my sweet unit. Anyway, I uh, haven't done any content for quite a while just because there's not really been much to uh, to show you. I'm working on uh, remodeling up here, so I just, I don't know, combine that with the other unit. I have so many cars in here, I can't even, watching a friend of mine stream building a mining rig frame. Um, anyway, there just hasn't been room for me to work on cars, so this was a little more urgent. It's actually... A friend of a client's car. Normally, as you guys know, I don't work on anything all-wheel drive or automatic. This is both, <laughs> but it's a 2011 uh, X3 with the N52. So this was a one-year only deal, I think, before they went to the really garbage N20 uh, two-liter four-cylinder. So uh, it's tolerable, that's what it is. This uh, car is in here for a coolant reservoir that is cracked. Have that right here. It also needs front brakes and a transfer case fluid service. So I'm gonna do all of that, um, starting with the coolant reservoir. I just loosened the cap and took this off. I haven't done anything else yet. Next up there is uh, another quick disconnect right there. So I'll have to deal with that. But next thing I need to do is take the two 10 millimeters out of this little wiring loom so I can get at the actual mount. Now we can get up the 10 mil here. A quick stab that bad boy out. Okay, so there's a little tab. You gotta press through that hole and then pull up and just tilt. But the reservoir is more or less loose, at least to the point where I can get at that quick disconnect and the electrical connector for the level sender down there. So level sender first, then we'll take care of that level sender, um, the, uh, the feed tube. So Euro parts, I have mixed feelings on these guys. I had to sit there and sand the actual uh, input portion here because it would not snap on at all on the uh, the new pattern part tank. So unfortunately, I can't recommend you get one of those for this job. But I got it filled up and it looks like it's all right. So I'm going to try to sneak it back in there now after I put the cap on it. Obviously, it's way, way full, but uh, no leaks. So that's a great sign. Just got to get this uh, electrical connector back on it, and oh, maybe I can... Oh, I could do the water pump procedure, I suppose, huh? <laughs> okay. I think we're okay. Moving on to the transfer case. Yuck. All right, so now we're under here. See the drain plug and the fill plug. I took out just enough fasteners to be able to get my it's actually a 15 on that side and then 313s on this side so we get those out and we'll take this guy out which is probably a 17 then we'll be able to get the mount out of the way just enough to get at that fill plug all right there we are i'm gonna get my sockets undo the fill first and then i'll get my tray down here and we'll undo the uh the drain i'm really happy to see a fill plug on one of these because my mother's F31 does not have one. Well, there we are, it's draining out. Doesn't look the worst I've seen, but, excuse me, really not good, so. And normally I'd tell you what to put in here, but every time I say what oil I use, people find a way to complain. So you can use whatever you want. Um, but I'm using Redline MT90, which is a GL4 friction modified fluid. It'll be perfect for this. All right, sealed up. On to the front brakes. Yuck. So I don't know, it must have been to tires plus, but I had to put the thing on the ground and stand on that 20 inch long socket or uh, wrench to get these off. They were so in there. Yuck. Well, the only shock so far was uh, these slide pins are now eight millimeter hex instead of seven. So got the caliper off with just those. Um, the anti-rattle clip down there, you've watched my videos a million times, but just pry and pull. Looks like we do have a six mil rotator uh, on the rotor and looks like 18s on the back right there. So I'm gonna grab my 18, get the uh, bracket off, pull the retainer, we'll get the rotor off, we'll take a look at the hub and we'll start throwing new stuff on. 
Uh, hub doesn't look too bad, but we're still gonna hit it with the wire brush and the guide pins here before we put a little grease on them. This thing just isn't well looked after. This is why I'm picky. This is why I work on manual rear wheel drive stuff. It's just better looked after. All right, this is a zinc coated rotor so you don't have to wipe them down like you do with the other ones that are oiled. Time to throw the caliper bracket back on. They're actually 16s, not 18s that hold those. Then we will toss the new pads in here with the shims on them already. Those guys, not those guys. And uh, get the sensor put in, close it up and move on to the other side. All right, greased up guide pins, new rotor, new pads. Just gonna throw the little uh, plastic plugs back in. Can't forget those. Got the wear sensor all in its little cradle. Time to throw the wheel back on and nail the other side. All done, both sides. Uh, next up, I'm gonna pop the hood again and do the coolant system bleed. Oh, I have to change out that mirror glass too. Uh, <clears throat> Hopefully that's got it. And last but certainly not least, although it won't be auto dimming anymore, not even sure if that was ever actually hooked up, which is super weird. A cheapo eBay mirror glass. I like it. They actually put the convex on here too. That was like 20 bucks. Well worth it. Who cares about the plastic? This thing is indeed bleeding. No drippies. Excellent. Cool, close her up and she's good to go. This thing needs thrust arms really bad. <laughs> I came in for, uh, well, brakes were due just on clearance anyway, but complaining about a shake under braking. Definitely those.